Alright, hey guys, welcome to a wild set review of the new expansion Rise of Shadows. Um, let's get right to it. We'll start with Druid with Lucent Bark. Um, 8 mana for a taunt, Death Rattle go dormant, restore 5 health to awaken this minion. Um, I think this card had potential in Taunt Druid. But I don't really expect it to make the cut because it's competing with Primordial Drake and Witch King. And I think both of them are much better than this. So I don't think this is going to see any play really. So I'm just going to give it a 2. It's not a terrible card, it's just not something I expect to see play. Um, Keeper, Daladris. After you cast a choose one spell, add copies of both choices to your hand. Um, it's a pretty reasonable card. I don't think the interactions are powerful enough to really, um, make a case for it in Wild. It's, again, an okay card, just not powerful enough, in my opinion. Uh, it's powerful with, like, Raven Idol. It's not too bad with Jade Idol, because you get two Jades. But the thing is, you don't want to play the Truffle version of it right away. So, it's okay. Um, it's kind of good with Whipping Roots and Power of the Wild, things like that, so it might be viable in like an aggro druid, but other than that, I don't really see it seem play. Um, Crystal Stag is definitely an interesting one. 5 mana, 4-4 four, four, Rush, Battlecry, if you've restored 5 health this game, it's summon a copy of this. Um... It's a powerful effect if you can restore 5 health easily. I think it's fairly doable with crystal power. But other than that, I don't really expect it. I don't really think there's much that heals that's playable in Wild in Druid. And healing is just a weird mechanic for Druid because, like, you, because of all the armor you gain, like, you aren't going to be able to heal that much. Hypothetically, so I don't think this will see play. It is a very powerful effect um, And it's nice that you don't have to do it restore five health to turn you play it But I still think it's not quite good enough for wild Crystal stone portal or crystal sun portal um, Two mana discover a druid minion if your hand has no minions keep all three so card is reasonable um if you have a deck with few with not very many minions it can be kind of like a pseudo draw three but it's much weaker than drawing three because it's three random cards that aren't in your deck so it's a lot worse than draw three um it's still like reasonable um uh, if you're in the right deck so i'm gonna give it a 2.5 the fourth aid, um, eight mana, twin spell, summon five, two, two, treants. Um, might be a good enough card in standard. I don't really expect it to see play in wild. It's eight mana, just too slow. Um, it is nice that it makes them use two AoE spells, but it's just a little too, it's just too slow. So I'm just going to give it a one. Uh, next up we have Life Weaver. Whenever you restore health, add a random druid spell to your hand. Um, 3 mana 2-5 is decent stats. Um, but again, you aren't really going to be restoring health a ton in druid. I think crystal power is like the only card that you would use for that. And I just don't think it's quite good enough. Um, if it was in a different class, it would probably be, be it would probably be good enough. Like if it was in Priest. It would probably be quite good, but as is, I don't really expect it to see play. I'm going to give it a 1.5 because it, it is a powerful effect. It's just not in the right class. Um, Dreamway Guardians. Two mana, summon two, one, two, Dryad with life deal. Um, so this is just like basically a weaker Echoing News in my eyes. Um, you aren't going to play this in Aggro Druid over Echoing News, and Aggro Druid doesn't even play Echoing News, so 
I just don't really see this ever making the cut ever. I just like they're just one two with life deal are just not drawn enough. Um just gotta like it's just not good enough. It's worse than Ackley News. The life deal just isn't relevant enough. If you're playing a token deck, the life deal isn't that relevant anyway, and you much rather have Ackley News. Blessing of the Ancient Twin Fell, give your minions plus one plus one for three mana. Um, this card is just too expensive to be to really see play in wild. It might be good enough in standard, um, but three mana for a Mark of the Lotus is just really really bad, and like paying six mana to get plus two plus two is also just really bad. It's just too slow and too clunky for an effect to be good enough. Um, Acorn Bear, one mana, two, one, death rattle, add two, one, one, squirrel to hand. This card is nuts. Sorry, I had to do it. Um, no, but um, this card is decent. Um, it's, a, it's a reasonable card. It's not something I expect to see a ton of play, but it might see play in Aggro Druid, because it does give you three bodies to work with. Um, it's okay. I'll give it a three, I think. It has potential. Alright, this this card's pretty exciting to me. Crystal Power. One mana, deal two damage to a minion, or restore five health. So, this is like your payoff for the Stag, or the Wisdom Bark. Um, or, um, the Life Weaver. I think it's pretty strong because it's... Deal two damage to a minion, that's a pretty powerful mode, and then it it has the flexibility of also being able to restore five health if you need it. Uh, I think this card is quite good. I'll give it a three. Alright, now we move on to Hunter. Um first off we have Verisa Windrunner. Five mana, five six battle cry, equip Thoradal the Star's Fury. So Thoradal the Star's Fury is a three mana. Well, not that that's relevant. Two three weapon. Uh, after your hero attacks, gain spell damage plus two this turn. So this is kind of like a mini Malagos um, for Hunter. It's kind of nice because it has the weapon equipped. I think this card is reasonable. It's not amazing. Um, might see some play. I think this, uh, effect is pretty powerful. Maybe, maybe we'll see play in some kind of Malagos Hunter deck. Um, I will give it a 3. Oblivitron, 6 mana, 3, 4, Death Rattle. Mech, summon a mech from your hand and trigger Death Rattle. Um, this card is just really slow. Um, it might be good enough. I mean, it might be good with, uh, Umbra. You can go Umbra into this and it needs. That's like the only case scenario where I think this is good. And even then, like, you're, it's just really slow if you're doing that. Um, I don't really expect it to see any play. I'm just gonna give it a 1. Um, Arcane Fletcher is next. Four mana, three, three. Whenever you play a one-one minion or one-cost minion, draw a spell from your deck. Um, card draw and hunter is pretty good, but um, I think there are much better options, such as like master's call, things like that. Um, maybe this is something you want in your quest hunter deck. I feel like it's a little too slow there as well, so I don't really expect it to see much play, if any. Um, next up we have Nine Lives. Discover a friendly death rattle minion that I just game also trigger its death rattle. So, you're gonna use this with like, the eggs, mostly. Um, mostly just uh, New Rubian and Devil Sword eggs. Otherwise this isn't really doing a whole lot. You don't want to do this in the late game. I mean, I guess in the late game it's fine, but it's just not super exciting in the late game basically, is what I'm trying to say. Um, I think 
this card is okay early in Death Rattle Hunter. It's not like super good, it's just a 3 mana 5-5 five five basically, or 4-4. Four four. Uh, 3 mana 5-5 five five pretty good. Um, so I'm going to give it a 3. It's not um, super busted or anything, um, but it has potential. Alright, next we have Unleash the Beast. Um, six mana twin spell summon a five five wyvern with rush. Um this card is um okay. It's a two for one, because you get to play it twice, you get to kill two things. Which is nice, but it's also twelve mana investment if you're gonna kill two things over two turns, which isn't super exciting. Um it's just not quite good enough, I don't think. It's a reasonable effect, but it's just really clunky. I'm gonna give it a 2. Uh, I don't really expect it to see play, but it's not the worst. Um, hunting Party. 5 mana, copy all beasts in your hand. Again, it's just like really slow. Um, if you wanna draw, draw a beast, you should play Master's Call. I mean, obviously this gives you more value, but like, it's just too slow. And by the time it's turn 5, how many beats are you really going to have in your hand? Um, next up we have Shimmer Fly. 1 mana, 1-1 one, one Death Rattle, add a random Hunter spell to your hand. The card is very similar to um, Jewel of Macaw and Web Spinner. Um, it's a reasonable card. I don't, I think getting a random beast is likely better than a random hunter spell though. So I think this card is going to be slightly worse than those. Um, so I'm going to have to give it a 2.5 I think. Next up we have Mark Shot. Deal 4 damage to a minion, discover a spell. Um, this card is reasonable. Not too bad, it's a powerful effect, but the problem I have with it is it's competing with Flanking Strike, and I think Flanking Strike is much better, because it gives you tempo as opposed to spell. Um, but this card isn't bad, um, if you want like a third Flanking Strike, you can maybe play this card, but I think in Spell Hunter you aren't going to be able to find room for this, and it's not really making, it's making a cut in any other Hunter deck, so... I'm going to give it a 2. Urthotron is 3 mana, death rattle, 3-3, three, three, draw a mech from your deck. Um, potentially a powerful effect, uh, you get to tutor for a mech, basically, if uh, you only play, like you can play this and Zilliax is your only mech, but then the second copy of this is really bad and um, I don't know. Card okay. I don't really expect it to see play. Um, there's no mech I really want to tutor for other than maybe Zilliax. And again, it's awkward because then you could hit the second one of this. Uh, I don't think it'll see much play. It has potential though. Rapid Fire, um, one mana, twin spell, deal one damage. So this is like two thirds of a candle trap basically. Um, it's good if you're playing like something that cares about spells like uh, Gadget and Auctioneer or Wild Pyromancer, things like that. Um, otherwise I don't really think this card's good enough. Um, it's just not powerful enough. Candle Trap just does the be job better. You don't have to pay two mana for it. And you just get to kill, you get to deal one more damage with Candle Shot than this, so just going to have to give this a 1. Alright, next up we have Mage. So here we have Calicos, the first Mage Legendary. Your first spell each turn costs 0. Battle Cry, discover a spell, 10 mana, 4, 12. So, 10 mana, 4, 12 is pretty bad. Um, obviously the first spell each turn costs zero, so if you have a big spell like Flame Strike, Fireland Portal, Power Creation, or uh, Pyroblast, it does give you a reasonable amount of tempo 
It's also good with Kazakis potions. Um, the problem is the Discover spell isn't really that powerful because there's a lot of bad spells in Wild for Mage. Um, I think this is not going to see a ton of play. It has a lot of potential, um, but I don't think it's powerful enough. 4 or 12 is just not drawn enough. And the only time like this is going to get enough value is if it lives for a turn, and then you get to play 2 spells for 0. But that's asking a lot. And it's also just very slow and wild, which is a very fast format. So I don't expect this to see much play. I'm going to give it a 2. Alright, so Khadgar, 2 mana, 2-2, two, two, your cards that summon minions summon twice as many. Um, I think powerful in the right amount of, in the right circumstances. Um, it's very powerful with power creation. Um, the first thought I had when I saw this card is, um, a Spiteful Summoner. And you can kind of put power creation in there as well, so you can play Khadgar and power creation, Spiteful Summoner. In the same deck. There's also um, a 6 mana 5-5 five, five Faithless Summoner that summons a 3 drop that you could potentially run in Fightful Summoner Mage, um, which would also combo with this. There's a lot of synergy with uh, Fightful Mage and with this card. Um, you could also play with uh, Syndragosa for the meme to get 4 um, random legendaries into 2. But I think if you're going to see this card, it's mostly just going to be in Fightful Mage. But it has a lot of uh, potential interactions and applications. So I'm going to give it a 3. Power Creation is the 8 mana spell. Uh, discover a 6 cost minion, summon two copies of it. I think this card is pretty reasonable, especially good with Khadgar. Uh, I think this is the perfect card for Fightful Mage. Um, you didn't really want to play Pyroblast. I mean, you can still play Pyroblast. You don't have to play two of them now. You can play, like, one Pyroblast, two of these, probably, and be okay. Could also consider, like, Pyroend Portal for more tempo. Um, I think this card is reasonable. It's, it's okay by itself. Um, I'm gonna go 3.5. Mana Cyclone. So, two mana... Battle cry for each spell you cast a turn, add a random mage spell to your hand, 2-2. Two, two. So this seems like a card that you would want in like a Flame Waker type mage deck. Um, it's a powerful effect. Um, the problem is random, again, random mage spells are not very powerful in wild. There's a lot of bad ones. Um, so you'd have to probably play quite a few spells for this to be good. Um, you can... Um, combo it with Sorcerer's Apprentice for a lot of cheap spells, but I don't know. Um, it's it's a reasonable effect, but I just don't... The random mage spells are not super powerful, so I'm just going to give it a 2. Curantor Tricaster. This card's very interesting. Um, 4 mana, spell damage, plus 3. Your spells cost 1 more, though. So... Spell damage plus 3 is a very powerful effect. Um, their spells cost 1 more is a big deal though. Um, I think uh, it would take a very rare occasion for this to be good. But spell damage plus 3 is very very powerful. Um, you're likely only going to be able to cast 1 spell with it though is a problem. Um, you could play like this into Frostbolt Ice Lance, and that would be um, 6 damage plus 7 damage, so 13, which isn't bad, but I just don't really see this seeing a ton of play. It's not, it's a pretty powerful effect, but the spell, your spells cost one more is pretty rough. I'll go 2.5 with it, because I do think spell damage plus 3 is a very powerful effect. Conjurer's Calling. So this card is very interesting to me. Uh, it's similar to uh, Evolve mechanics in Shaman, because you want to use it on the same type of minions, um, like such as like Doppelganger and things like that. Um, it's a pretty. It also has twin spells, so you get to do it twice. So I think um, it, this had potential. 
you have to figure out what minion you really want to target with it um, for it to be good. One thing you could do is like barns into a big minion and then conjure calling the big minion you got and then you get two big minions. Um, but yeah, this card's interesting. Um, it could be viable. It's also like good if you can value trade with the minion you're targeting and then do it. Because then it's similar to like just healing your minion and making a copy of it. I think the card had potential. Uh, magic trick. Magic trick is one mana. Discover a spell that costs three or less. Um, card seems pretty strong. Um, it makes the most sense to me with um, Flame Waker and Archmage Antonitis. Um, it's also not bad with Mana Cyclone if you want to go that route. Um, it's good with Gadget and Auctioneer. Maybe this enables some kind of Miracle Mage. Um, my, um, I don't think it's, uh, gonna make Miracle Mage powerful enough, but it is a pretty strong card for a deck like that. Um, it's very, very good with Archmage Antonitis. I would not be surprised if, uh, it's off play with that. Um, it does also seem good with Flame Waker. I think this card has a good amount of potential. And I'm gonna give it a 3. It's a very cheap bell and can give you another cheap bell. Messenger, Raven, 3 mana, 3, 2, discover a mage minion. Um, most discover effects are fairly powerful. Um, the problem is it's just a 3 mana, 3, 2. Um, I think Cabal Courier is likely better than this card, and you're already not really playing Cabal Courier in Wild. Um, so I don't really expect it to see much play. I really like the art though, it's pretty sweet, but I don't really think it's quite good enough. I'm gonna go 1.5. Magic Dark Frog, um, it's another payoff for the cheap Bell Mage deck. Um, two mana after you cast the spell, deal one damage to a random enemy minion, 1-3. Um, it's also a beast, which is interesting. Uh, I don't think this effect is quite powerful enough. Um, with Sorcerer's Apprentice, maybe it uh, can help you clear some boards with, like with Flame Waker. It's a very bad version of Flame Waker, I think, though. Um, it is. Um, it does deal damage to, the, to a minion, though, so it doesn't hit face ever, which is nice because Flame Waker does hit face at times when you really just need it to hit the minion. Um, I still don't think this card's quite powerful enough. I don't really expect it to see much play. And then we have Ray of Frost, the last mage card. One mana, twin spell, freeze a minion. If it's already frozen, deal two damage to it. Um, this card seems kind of pretty weak to me. Um, it's a card that you might want in very specific scenarios like with Flame Waker or um, Archmage Antonitis, things like that. This is like a Miracle Mage card if um, Miracle Mage ends up being a thing. Other than that though, I don't really expect it to do much. I'm just gonna give it a 1. Um, it could be okay in Miracle Mage, that's the only argument I could see. Alright, Paladin. Um, first off we have Nozari, um, Battle Cry, Restore, both heroes to full house, 10 mana, 412. So another 10 mana, 412, again, not, not very good that, um, but it has Tree of Life attached to it, um, so it's a pretty powerful effect, the Pseudo Reno, um, if you're playing a controlling deck, you don't care if they gain life. Um, but the problem is Control Paladin isn't really a sane in Wild, and it doesn't really have enough tools to compete with the rest of the metagame. Um, it's, I'm gonna give it a reasonable rating because it is a powerful card, but it doesn't really have a home right now. Commander Risa, um, been a lot of Secret Paladin support in the set. 
three mana, four, three, your secrets trigger twice. So, the secrets that work best with this are Avenge, Noble Sack, um, and the new Never Surrender. It doesn't work super good with Auto Defense Matrix, but you can make the case for not running that card as well. You might not have room. Um, this card just seemed pretty powerful. 3 mana, 4, 3. It's a good curve play with all the secrets in play. Uh, it seems pretty strong to me. I'm gonna give it a 4, I think. Dragon Speaker. 5 mana, 3, 5. Give all dragons in your hand, plus 3, plus 3. Um, I don't really expect this to see a ton of play. It's kind of a mid-range paladin card. But I think there are better ways to build mid-range paladin than going the dragon route. Um, I think it's a reasonable effect. I think it's more of a meme than anything now. So I'm going to go with a 1.5. Alright, next we have Duel. Um, 5 mana, summon a minion from each player deck they fight. So this is kind of like big paladin support. Um, I don't really expect that to be a thing, but maybe with Call to Adventure and this, these two cards together, maybe it will be viable enough. I don't think it will be, but this is a powerful effect in a big type Paladin deck because it's some of the minion, it's some of the huge minion from your deck, and it also just kills theirs. It's removal, and it's like a Shadow Essence. Very powerful effect. Um, I'm going to give it a strong rating because it is a very powerful effect, but I don't expect it to be, I don't expect Big Paladin to be uh, strong enough to for this to really see play. And then we have Call to Adventure, the other Big Paladin support card. Draw the wolf, cost minion from your deck, give it plus two, plus two. So, in Big Paladin you can play this to draw your barns and make it a five, six pretty strong, um, but outside of that, I don't really think, uh, it does tutor for a minion, I don't think there's any case where you really want to tutor for a minion that's your lowest cost minion in Paladin, other than Barn. so I don't really expect it to see much play. Again, it's a powerful effect, but not something that really has a home right now. Uh, next card is very exciting for Secret Paladin players. Um, Mysterious Blade, basically the Fiery War Axe. Um, two mana, Battle Cry if you control Secret Game, plus one attack, two two weapon. So it'll be a three two weapon. Uh, it's pre nerfed Fiery War Axe with a secret in play. Um, the only problem is you have to play a secret on one, which is fine, honestly. Um, it is bad if you don't have the secret, obviously, but it's very powerful if you do have the secret, which can make your deck consistent enough to where this is going to be a Viry War Axe enough, that it's going to be good enough. I think this card is very powerful, um, should help Paladin a lot in the early game, and might make Secret Paladin insane. There's a lot of Secret Paladin support cards in this set. Desperate Measures. Um, this card is a lot worse um, of a Secret Paladin payoff, I think. It's one mana, twin spell, cast a random Paladin secret. Uh, the problem with this card is there's so many bad Paladin secrets in Wild. Um, you don't really want to get things like Repentance, Competitive Spirit, um, Sacred Trial, Eye for an Eye. You don't really want those cards at all. And as a result, I don't expect this card to see much play in, in Wild. It might be good enough in Standard, because the uh, secrets aren't nearly as bad in Standard, but this card is just too weak in Wild. Too many bad secrets. Um, Bronze Herald is next. 3 mana, 3-2 three, Dragon. Add 2, 4-4 four, four Dragon to your hand. So this is like the Dragon Hand Buff card to go with the Dragon Speaker. Um, it's a reasonable card, it's not super exciting, 
but it does add two four four dragon to your hand. Um, it's just the hand buff dragon card, which I think is a meme. I don't really expect that deck to be a thing. So, 1.5. Life Forged Blessing. Two mana, twin fell, give a friendly minion life deal. Um, life deal is a reasonable, um, effect, but I don't think there's anything that you really want to give life deal to. Um, you can make the argument, oh, I want to give life deal to my Molten Giant after I said call Molten Giant, but like, if you're to calling into Molten Giant, you're winning already most of the time, and you don't need this type of effect. Um, other than that, I really don't see any uses for this card. I think it's just, like, Paladin isn't one, isn't a class that really needs healing if you're going to be aggressive. And if you're going to be defensive, you're not going to be playing a lot of minions that this would be good with. So I just don't think this card is good enough ever, really. Uh, next card, Never Surrender. This is likely one of the most powerful Secret Paladin payoffs of the set. Um, it's just a super strong secret. Um, when your opponent casts a spell, give your minion plus two health. So... The first, when this first was revealed, you just, I thought about this, an Odd Paladin, very, very powerful an Odd Paladin, which is already a tier 1 deck. This card just makes it a lot less vulnerable to AoE. It's very, very powerful against things like Defile, Volcanic Potion, um, things like that. There's a lot of other um, things like Explosive Trap, Unleash the Hound. It, it affects almost every class trying to deal with Odd Paladin. It's a very, very powerful effect. And after all these other Secret Paladin payoffs have been revealed, I was like, okay, this card's really good in Secret Paladin, too. Um, uh, when this was first revealed, I didn't think Secret Paladin was going to be a thing, but after all the payoffs they made, it's very likely that this deck will be good enough. And... So just another really powerful secret that will mess with your opponent, and it's very hard to play around all of the Paladin secrets in Wild right now. So I'm going to give this, I think this is going to be the first five. Um, it might not be, it, on the surface it might not look as powerful as like Mysterious Blade, but um, the fact that it's so good in Odd Paladin and it's going to be in really, really good in Secret Paladin as well makes me think it's very, it deserves a 5 here. Next up we have Priest. First off we have Katrina Muerte. Um, 8 mana, 6, 8 at the end of your turn, summon a friendly minion that dies this game. Uh, I expect this to see... A good amount of play in Big Priest. Um, it's kind of whether you want to play this or Rag. I think you can make the argument for either one. Um, I think it's a little bit better than Rag against Aggro. Um, against Control, it's about the same, I'd say. So it might see play over Rag. It's hard to say. Um, it's also something that you would consider if you were playing it specialist format with Big Priest, you would probably bring this in versus Control decks, um, and it'd be very, very difficult for them to deal with, and you could probably bring in Mass Resurrection in that case as well. Uh, I think this is probably going to see play over Rag. Um, it's hard to say, though. Both cards are very powerful. Uh, I'm going to give it a 4. I think the card is very, very powerful in Big Priest. Um, next up we have Madame Lazul, 3 mana, 3, 2, discover a copy of the card in your opponent's hand. Similar effect to Camellios, but being able to discover a card from your opponent's hand is very powerful, as opposed to just, like, getting a random card from your opponent's hand every turn. Um, I think this card is pretty powerful, but it's also slow, and most discover cards like this, like Cabal Courier, somewhere it's aimed like that, um, don't see play. This is discovering a better card than Cabal Courier is most of the time, 
because it's something that someone put in their deck and Cabal Courier is something completely random. Um, I think this card is powerful, but I don't think it's something that really wants to be in any Priest deck right now. Uh, I don't think it really has a home. Next up we have Shadowy Figure. 2 mana, 2-2 two, two, Battle Cry, transform into a 2 coup copy of a ran friendly Death Rattle minion. Um, it's a powerful effect. I'm not sure what Death Rattle minion you would really want to copy with this. Is the saying it is a very powerful effect though. It has a lot of potential applications. Um, the I don't think it triggered the quest, which is kind of a problem. Um, but I think it's powerful cards that has a ton of application potentially. Um, Lazul's scheme zero mana reduce the attack of an enemy minion by one until the next turn. Upgrade each turn. Um, it's the type of card that I would not be surprised if it play if it was played in a Dragon Soul kind of Miracle Priest. Outside of that, I don't really think it's powerful enough. Um, it's similar to like um, the Warlock card, the two mana give your enemy minions negative minus two attack um, with Echo. It's similar to that. Um, and that's all, that didn't really see a ton of play and it hits multiple minions. This only hits one. I don't really think this will see play. Um, in standard, you can make the argument with this um, with Cabal Shadow Priest. You can pretty much do whatever you want with this. Um, but in Wild, we have Twilight Acolyte, so I don't really think you want this card in that case either. So I'm just going to give it a 1. Mass Resurrection, 9 mana, 7 3 friendly minions that died this game. So this is a slightly more flexible Bellstone in Big Priest because it can summon the same minion, so you don't need as many minions to die in the game, but. 9 mana, it's just, and it summons 1 west and then upgraded, fully upgraded Spellstone. It's a lot worse than Spellstone, so I don't really expect it to see much play outside of Betulist formats. Um, so I'm going to give it a, and I'll give it a 1.5, because again, it does have applications in Betulist. Outside of that, not really though. Convincing Infiltrator, 5 mana, 2, 6, Death Rattle. Um, destroy a random enemy minion and add taunt. Uh, this is something that I think could see play. It's competing with Sludge Belcher and Apple Bomb at the same mana cost. Uh, you can make the argument that it's better than them in certain scenarios. Um, I think you're going to want this against decks that you're not going to want flood voucher against and things like that. It's a very, I think it's better in a lot of different situations than flood voucher and apple bomb. Um, I think it's on par with both of them and could see some play in a, some kind of Nazoth priest or death rattle class priest. Um, I'm going to give it a three, I think. Um, I think it is a little bit weaker than Belcher, but Belcher is very, very powerful, obviously. Um, next up we have Forbidden Ward, zero mana, spend all your mana, destroy a minion with that much attack or less. Um, when I first saw this card I thought it was powerful, but the problem is it just doesn't really, it's just so inefficient and it's just so clunky that I just don't really see it being powerful enough. Like sure you can pay for mana to destroy a four attack minion, that's something priests usually can't do. But I think in most cases you're going to want Entomb over this in that case. Um, it's just not quite powerful enough. I don't think it's just a little too clunky and answers things too awkwardly. So I'm just going to give it a 1.5 I guess. Because it's not horrendous. I just don't really see it being play. Um, Hench Clan Shade Quill. 4 mana, 4 7, death rattle, restore 5 health to the enemy hero. Um, so this is a kind of like a silence priest card. 
Um, I don't really think it's powerful enough there though because you have Eerie Statue and um, it's just a 4-7, it's kind of slow. You have a 4-8 for 3 already in Humongous Razor Leaf. So I really don't see this scene play ever really. Um, it's just not powerful enough in Wild. Maybe in Standard you can make the argument for it in Inner Fire Priest or Silence Priest, but I just don't really think it's powerful enough in Wild. Unsweeping Soul. Um, four mana, Silence of Friendly Minion, and summon a copy of it. So, this card seems pretty strong in Silent Priest. It's kind of like a Faceless Chambler, um, but you get to silence both minions. So, it's similar to Faceless Chambler, but it's you get to silence the minion you want to silence instead of just copying it. So I think this card could see play in Silence Priest if that does become an archetype. And I think it's a pretty powerful effect, so I'm going to give it a 3. Evil Conscriptor. 2 mana, 2-2 two, two death rattle, add a whack into your hand. Um, pretty reasonable effect. Um, it's a pretty reasonable death rattle, I think. Maybe a uh, viable in Quest Priest archetypes. Um, I think it's a pretty reasonable effect. It's not super exciting, but wackies are pretty powerful. Um, so I'm going to just give it a 3. It's very similar to the shadowy figure. Um, very similar. I think this is um, on par with it. And it also activates the clash that uh, shadowy figure does not. Next up we have Rogue. First up, we have 7 mana legendary attack Nazwhisker. 6-6, six, six, whenever you shuffle a card into your deck, add a copy to your hand. Um, this card seems very win more to me. I don't really think there's any case scenario where you would want this in your deck. And Milrow gets way too slow. You'd rather have um, Togwaggle Scheme. And you just don't really need this at that point. Um, maybe in some kind of meme deck you can make make it. I don't. I don't know. It it's okay with um, academic espionage. It's, it could be pretty powerful there, but I think outside of that, it's just not very strong. Um, hey, Spear and Togwaggle, six mana, five five. Battlecry, if you control Wacky, choose a Fantastic Treasure. So, the Fantastic Treasures are the Mirror and the Fox cards, Golden Cobalt, Talon's Goblet, Wondrous Wand, and Xerox Crown. Um, and you get to discover them, so you're basically getting whichever one you want most of the time. There's going to be one left out, obviously, when you discover. But, um, getting the treasures, the treasures are very powerful. Um, I think this card is reasonable. The 6 mana 5-5 five five is a little slow, um, but I think the payoff of getting a ridiculous amount of value with Tall and Goblet, Golden Cobalt, or just getting a lot of cards or very powerful minions, I think is drawn enough payoff for this to be good enough. Alright, next we have Unidentified Contract. Destroy a minion gains a bonus effect in your hand. Um, the different effects are deal with damage to adjacent minions. That's probably one of the strongest effects. It, it can act as a uh, AoE effect in that case. Um, the other one is summon a 1-1 one, one Assassin with Poison and Stealth. Um, also a pretty good one. It uh, forces your opponent to play like a flame strike or something to deal with it, and if, you're if they're dealing with it with something expensive like that, you're not really upset about it. Um, add two coins to your hand, that's pretty okay. It's not like super exciting. You don't want to pay two mana for adding two coins to your hand. Um, add a copy of destroyed minion to your hand, that's also probably not that strong. Um, so overall, I think this card is just a little bit too weak. 
and it probably won't see much play. Uh, next up we have Waggle Pick. 4 mana, Death Rattle, 4 2 weapon, return a random friendly minion to your hand, it costs 2 less. Um, Death Bite was pretty strong, this is not a Death Bite, but it's same stats. Um, instead of the Whirlwind you get a Shadow Step. Um, I think this card is pretty powerful. Um, the only thing is I don't know if it has a home right now. But I think on power level it is something uh, that I'm interested in. So I'll give it a 3. Vendetta. 4 mana, deal 4 damage to a minion, cost 0 if you're holding a card from another class. I think this card is completely absurd. I think this card is very, very, very powerful. Um, the fact that you can just play this for 0 mana if you play this Watchburg or... or um, Blink Fox or Hen Clamberg or like very very powerful and those cards aren't bad by themselves. You can play this in a non burgle rogue, you can play it in a tempo rogue, and just use it as a zero mana deal for and that's just really really powerful. It can give you a huge tempo swing. I think this card has a ton of applications. Um we'll just give it a four. Um, it's very powerful. You could argue it's a 5. Next up we have Underbelly Fence. Um, 2 mana, 2, 3, Battle Cry if you're holding a card from an art class. Gain plus 1, plus 1, and rush. Again, another super powerful um, payoff for uh, Burgle Rogue. But it's also, again, just a very powerful Temple card if you play as Watch Burgle Round 1. Um, I think if you're playing this in your deck, you can play as Watchburg or, or and um, Hallucination in the deck and be pretty happy with it. Um, just a, rush, a totem golem with Rush, and that's incredibly powerful, especially with no overload. I think this card is very, very strong. Alright, next we have Cogwaggle Scheme. One mana, choose a minion, shuffle one copy of it into your deck, upgrades each turn. So this is a card that basically replaces Gain Up and Mill Rogue. Um, I don't really think it has any other applications that you would really want to play this in. Um, I can't think of any anyway. Uh, but it's very powerful in Mill Rogue, so I'll give it a 3. Next up we have Hench Clan Burglar, 4 mana, 4, 3, Discover a Spell from another class. It's also a Pirate, which is relevant. Um, I think this card is pretty strong. It does have a lot of, um, a lot of competition at the 4-drop slot in Rogue. You have, like, Tomb Pillager, Baldori Strider, and, um, things like that, and Elven Minstrel. But I think, um, there are definitely decks where you wouldn't want Feldori Strider and you would want this. And it's also a pirate, so it has pirate synergies with like South Sea Captain and things like that. You can find it off Raiding Party. I think this card is reasonable. And I'll just give it a 3. Um, Evil Miscreant, 3 mana, 1, 5, combo, add 2 random wacky to your hand. So this is basically like your um, payoff for playing the Togwaggle deck. Um, It'll help you enable Togwaggle. I think this card is pretty strong. It has uh, two random wackies. Wackies are pretty powerful. One mana minion. And uh, I think this card is reasonable. Not too bad. Alright, next card. Daring Escape. One mana. Return all friendly minion to your hand. This card is insane for Quest Rogue. I think this card might make Quest Rogue viable in the format. Um, it's also something you could consider for like Mill Rogue and things like that. It's, I think this has a lot of potential applications. This card is very, very powerful and it's completely absurd in Quest Rogue and will probably make it powerful enough in Wild to see play. Alright, next we have Shaman. Let's see what we've got here. Um, Swamp, King, Swamp Queen Hagasa. Um, 
7 mana Battlecry, add a 5 5 horror to your hand, teach it 2 shaman spells. Um, this card seemed very powerful to me. Being able to play a. Um, you lose a lot of tempo with the 7 mana 5 5, but the value you get off of the 5 5 the next turn is very, very powerful. Um, being able to cast 2 spells um, off of the 5 5 next the turn after is very very powerful it also seems like a strong effect with Shutterwalk um, and I think this card will see quite a bit of play I'm not sure if it has um, a home right now it probably would see play in a Shutterwalk deck alright next we have Scargill 4 mana 4 4 your Murloc cost 1 um, this one I'm not super high on. I think most, I think, uh, your Murlocs are already pretty cheap, and by the time you get this out, I feel like it's not doing a ton. Um, you could make the argument it's good with, um, the Murloc class because you can play Megathin for one mana, but I, I just don't think it's all that good, and not something you really want to play in your deck. Just a four mana, four, four that, like, gives you slight upside, and not, a huge fan of it. I'll give it a 2. Alright, Muck Morpher. This card could be very powerful in a big shaman archetype, potentially. Um, 5 mana, 4-4, four, four, transform into a 4-4 four, four copy of a different minion in your deck. Um, the question you want to ask yourself about this card is, do you want to play it alongside Barnes, or do you just want to play two copies of this? Or do you want to play one copy of each? Regardless though, I think this card is pretty powerful. It's like a Shadow Essence type effect for a Shaman. Um, it seemed pretty strong to me. Uh, the first thing I thought of with this card is like White Eyes. Um, being able to shuffle a lot of 10 into your deck is pretty sweet. But uh, it probably has a lot of powerful applications with some of the bigger minions like Witch Kane and Yashiraj and things like that. I think this card is very, very powerful. Um, next up we have Witch's Brew, 2 mana, Shaman Spell Restore, 4 health, repeatable this turn. So, uh, I don't really see a point in running this ever. Um, healing Rain is just so much better and so much more efficient. You have to pay you have to play this uh, three times. You have to pay six mana to healing rain with this, and um, the flexibility it gives you isn't really that powerful. Like healing rain is just so much better, and I don't really see this seeing any play ever in wild. Um, Hag says scheme five mana. Um, shaman spell deal one damage to all minions. Upgrade each turn. I think this card is pretty powerful. Um. It's obviously quite a bad top deck, but if you get it early versus aggro, it can be game winning and or game changing, and it can give you a lot of um, a lot of leverage in that matchup. So I think that is a pretty powerful card for controlling shaman decks. Underbelly Angler, um, two mana, two three. After you play a murloc, add a random murloc to your hand. Um, I think one of the biggest problems with the uh, Murloc Shaman decks is they didn't have a very powerful 2-drop other than Rockpool Hunter. And I think this definitely fits the bill there. It's a very powerful effect. Um, it adds a bunch of random Murloc to hand. It can help a lot with the quest if you want to go that route. It's also just a good aggro Murloc Shaman card. I think this card is quite good. Um, Sludge Swarper is next. 1 mana, 2-1 Murloc. Add a Lackey to your hand, Overload 1. Um, seems like a pretty strong 1-drop. There also wasn't very many 1-drops in Murloc Shaman. Um, in Murloc Paladin you have a lot more 1-drops, and this is a great 1-drop um, for the deck. And can definitely help fill out the curve more. Um, and the wackies are pretty powerful, so I think the overload, paying the overload on this is fine. Um, not quite as strong as the underbelly angler, I think, but it is a powerful card. 
that I expect to see play in any Murloc Shaman deck. Walking Fountain, a mana 4 8 life deal rush wind fury. Um, cards seem very powerful to me. Um, being able to heal 8 and kill 2 things the turn you play it seems very, very strong. Um, this is another payoff for Corp Taker. Maybe make that a little bit more playable. Um, it's also just a good card by itself. I think it's this card is quite strong. And I wouldn't mind playing that in my deck. Um, next up we have Soul of the Murloc. 2 mana, give your minion death rattle summon a 1-1 one, one Murloc. I think this card is pretty powerful. Um, it's similar to Soul of the Forest. It's only 2 mana though. And it really helps the Chaman quest. Um, because the Chaman, says, the Chaman quest says summon. So you can just summon a lot of Murlocs off of the death rattles. I think this card is very, very powerful in both Quest Shaman and a Murloc Shaman archetype. Uh, Mutate is next. Zero mana, transform a friendly minion into a random one that costs one more. Um, this card seems okay. Uh, I don't really think you want to ever put this in your deck. Um, you just rather play Unstable Evolution. I just don't really see this ever being good enough. I don't think you want a uh, Sif Evolve effect in like a Doppelganger deck. I don't think you want one more effect. I think you just go with a one here. Um, Warlock, all right. First off, we have Felward Betrog. Eight mana, five, seven demon. Whenever you draw a minion, summon a copy with Rush that dies at the end of the turn. Um, this card seemed pretty powerful to me, if you have the tools to make it work. Um, it's good with Void Caller, because it's a very big demon and you can cheat it out. Um, I don't really expect it to see a ton of play. Um, the only real case that you can make for this being good is with, uh, Plot Twist. Very powerful with Plot Twist. Um, I think other than that, though, it's a little bit clunky and doesn't do quite enough. Um, so I'm gonna give it a 2.5, I think. It has potential, but I don't really expect it to be all that good. Next we have... Arch Villain Rift Bomb, 7 mana, 7 8 Taunt, Battle Cry, replace your hand, and what deck with Legendary Minion? Um, this is more of a meme card to me. I think it's a definitely card that I will definitely play with. Um, but it's not super competitive, I don't think. Um, the fact that it has Taunt is a big deal. It does help a little bit against Aggro in that case, but it's just a little bit too uh, gimmicky and too, uh, too much of a meme, in my opinion. I will give it a two. All right, next up we have Jumbo Imp. Um, 10 mana, 8-8, eight, eight, cost one less. Whenever a friendly demon dies while this is in your hand. Um, similar to Corridor Creeper. Um, it's obviously a lot worse than Corridor Creeper because it's uh, only friendly demon and Corridor Creeper with any creature or any minion, both your opponent or your side. Um, I think this card could be powerful enough in a Demon Zoo deck with like Implosion and things like that. Um, maybe a Fiendish Circle even. Uh, I think the card is pretty reasonable and has a lot of potential in a deck like that. Otherwise, I don't really expect it to see a ton of play. Um, Darkest Hour, 6 mana, destroy all friendly minions for each one, summon a random minion from your deck. So it's like a big Warlock card. Um, pretty on the fence about this one. It has a very powerful effect. Um, when you pair it with Blood Bloom, it can be very insane, but I also think it makes you give up a lot in deck building. Um... It makes you not want to play any cheap minions, which I mean might be fine because Warlock does have a lot of cheap bells that can help protect against aggression. So maybe this card is very powerful and might be good enough. I'm just going to give it a 3. 
Um, it has the potential to be a lot better than a 3, but I'm not sure if it's worth um, messing w or getting rid of cards like Cube and things like that in your deck. Um, but we'll see. Not sure. Um, Eager Underling. 4 mana 2-2, two, two, give 2 random friendly minion, plus 2 plus 2. So this is basically a death rattle fungal mancer. Um, except you don't get to choose the minions. It's kind of weak, I think. I think it's just, like, fungal mancer is a, definitely a card you want on a battle cry, not a death rattle. You want to be able to affect your minions right away, and this just does not seem powerful enough at all to me. Um, next we have Inferno. Three mana, give your demon plus one attack, deal one damage to all enemy minions. I think this card is quite powerful. Um, this is definitely a card you would want in Demon Zoo, I think. Um, it can help a lot against Odd Paladin in the uh, Demon Zoo versus Odd Paladin uh, matchup. And I think this card is just very powerful and can help that deck quite a bit. Alright, next we have like one of the most controversial deck uh, cards in the set, Plot Twist. A lot of people are rating this super high, a lot of people think it's bad. Um, two mana, shuffle your hand into your deck, draw the mini card. So, this card is a card that you saw in Yu-Gi-Oh! in the form of Reload and Magical Mallet, um, it was okay. Um, the fact that it gives you card disadvantage is not something that makes it attractive. But I think in Warlock especially, I think the card disadvantage is um, not that big of a deal because you have the two mana life, you have a two mana hero power that just completely nullifies it. Um, and doesn't, it makes, uh, makes up for the card disadvantage. Uh, I also think it has potential if you want to play it with Betrog. Um, I also think you can make, like, a combo Warlock deck with, um, the Gepito Joy Buzz. Like, maybe you make a Malagos Warlock deck with Plot Twist so you don't draw the Malagos before you get to play the Geppetto. Um, overall, I think the card has a reasonable amount of uh, application, and I don't think that it's that big of a downside in Warlock especially, because again, you have Life Tap to make up for the card disadvantage. So I'm gonna give this a three. Next up we have Aranasi Broodmother, six mana, four, six. Taunt. When you draw this, restore four health to your hero. This is another card you could combo with Plot Twist. Um, it's a pretty strong effect if you draw this. Um, you get to restore four health, so it's pretty nice. Uh, that being said, six mana, four, six taunt is pretty bad and not something I really want to put in my deck. So I'm going to give this a two. All right, next up we have Reform Scheme, Summon 111 Imp, upgrades each turn. I think this is just a little too weak. Um, it just takes way too long to get going. At that point, you'd rather probably just play Fiendish Circle for 411 Imps. Um, or Implosion, I think this card is just way too weak and too slow to see any play. Evil Genius. Two mana, two two. Battle cry, destroy a friendly minion to add two random wacky to your hand. Um, this card seemed pretty strong in like an egg warlock deck. Um, outside of that, I don't really see it being all that good. Um, it is a pretty powerful card in an egg warlock de type deck. Um, definitely has potential there. Again, wackies are pretty powerful, so I think this card is a solid three. Alright. Next we have Warrior. Um, first off we have the Boom Reaver. Ten mana, 
legendary, summon a copy of a minion in your deck, give it rush. Seven nine. Um this is like a big warrior card. I don't really think you want to play this, it's too slow. Um ten mana to get a big minion and give it rush, it does not seem powerful enough to me. And not really something I will want to play in my even in my big warrior deck, I don't really think it's powerful enough. Alright, Blast Master Boom, 7 mana, summon 2, 1-1 one, one Boom Bots for each bomb in your opponent's deck. Um, I think the Bomb Warrior deck is more of a meme, and I think you'd rather just play regular Doctor Boom if you're going to play a card like this. Uh, if you are going to play like a meme Bomb Warrior deck, sure you can play this card, I'm not huge on it otherwise though. Um, Omega Devastator, 4 mana, 4, 5 mech, if you have 10 mana crystal, deal 10 damage to a minion. Um, this card seems very powerful, um, I think the biggest application for this is off of discovering it off of Dr. Boom or, um, Omega Assembly, um, out of, like, Odd Warrior. Um, outside of that, um, it's hard to say whether this will find a home. Most Control Warrior decks aren't really a Saint and Wild other than Odd Warrior. Maybe this will make it drawn enough. It's hard to say. It is a very powerful card, so I will give it a good rating. 3.5. Next, we have Wrench Caliber. 4 mana, 3, 2 weapon. After your hero attacks, couple a bomb into your opponent's deck. Another meme Bomb Warrior card. Um, this is probably one of the worst ones. 4 mana, 3, 2 weapon is pretty bad. Um, not much to say there. Uh, t next one we have Dimensional Ripper. 10 mana, summon 2 copies of a minion in your deck. So this is another big warrior card. Um, again, 10 mana is just so slow and just not something you want to play in wild. It's not powerful enough effect for it to be played at 10 mana. Um, next up we have Clockwork Goblin, 3 mana, 3-3, three, three, shuffle a bomb into your opponent's deck, when drawn it explodes for 5 damage. Um, another Bomb Warrior card, it's again more of a meme deck. I think this is one of the best bomb effects though. It is much better than like um, Seaforium Bomber and things like that. So, I'll give it a 2. It's still not very good, though. Um, sweeping Strikes. 2 mana. Give a minion. Also damage a minion next to whoever, whomever this attacks. Um, cards seem pretty powerful. Uh, you can use it as a 2 mana um, destroy 3 minion, potentially. Well, destroy 2 minions, I guess. Because uh, the first one is getting attacked. But yeah. 2 mana destroy 2 minion potentially is a pretty powerful effect. Um, you have to be ahead on board for it to be good though. Or at least have a minion on board. So, it seems like an okay card. I think I'll give it a 2.5. It does have a lot of, um, it has a lot of uh, drawn interaction with Darius Crowley. You get to um, make it, make Darius really big um but other than that i think it's just fine uh dr boom scheme four mana gain one armor upgrades each turn i think this card is way 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 too slow like this card is just way too slow if it started at like i don't know four armor maybe it'd be good enough but it's just way too slow here um next we have Vicious Scrap Hound, 2 mana, 2-2, two, two. whenever this minion deal damage, you gain that much armor. Um, this isn't really something you want to put in your main deck. It's something that could be good if you discover it off of Dr. Boom or Omega Assembly. But outside of that, it's not really that good. Next up, we have Improve Morale, 1 mana, deal 1 damage to a minion if it survives. Add a lack to your hand. Um, it's an okay execute enabler. Um, it's hard to say whether it's better than things like Slam. I think you'd rather draw a card up from your deck than add a wacky. 
Um, but this card is okay. Uh, it's not super exciting. Alright, now we're on to neutrals. First off, we have Gibetto Joybug. Um, 8 mana, battle cry, draw 2 minions from your deck, set their attack, health, and cost to 1 mana. This has a lot of potential powerful interactions and combos. I think this card has a lot of potential. Um, it could get, it could be pretty good in pretty much any Malagos deck. Um, could also be good in a Aviana Kun kind of combo druid. Uh, I think this card has a lot of potential. Um, let's see. Next up we have Archivist Oeciana. 8 mana, 7-7, seven, seven, discover 5 cards. Replace your deck with 2 copies of each. Um, this card just really weak. I don't think you would ever want to put this in your deck. Uh, it's a good meme. <laughs> That's about it. Definitely not a card I really want to play in wild. Um, so yeah, just gonna get that a one easily. Next we have Chef Nomi, 7 mana, 6-6. Six, six. If your deck is empty, summon 6-6, six, 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 Grease Fire Elementals. Um, I think this card is powerful. Um, it's powerful to have a 7 mana board fill effect, but I think when you're in fatigue, I don't think this is gonna be good enough. You can pair it with Zola and make two board fills, and maybe that's strong enough. And it's a pretty good um, effect. Um, it's just really good to have a seven mana board fill. So I think this card has potential. Um, the problem is you have to draw your whole deck to do it, and that takes a long time. Um, I'm gonna give it a 2.5 for now. I think I might have actually forgotten to put this on the spreadsheet. I'll deal with that in a minute. Um, Barista Lynchin, add a copy of each of your other battle cry minion to your hand. Um, Card seems okay. Um, might be something you want to play in a Reno deck. Uh, my inclination is no, because it's a lot slower than Zola. Um, also can't play Reno and this in the same turn. I don't think this card will see a ton of play, but it has some applications. Yeah, 2.5 seems about right. Um, Archmage Vargas, at the end of your turn, cast a spell you cast this turn, targets are shown randomly, 4 mana, 2, 6. Um, I think this card has a lot of potential applications. Um, it's just, uh, I'm not sure what you would want to play with this card, but it just has so much potential that I think it has to be good. Um, in Druid, for example, you can Oaken Summons this out, and if they don't kill you, you just get to go cr crazy. And it also just casts the Oaken Summons again, which is pretty powerful. Um, I think this card has a lot of potential. Eh, let's just make it a 4. I think this card's very strong. Next we have Big Bad Archmage. 10 mana, 6-6. Six, six. At the end of your turn, summon a random 6-drop. Um, this card just seemed way too weak to me. Unless you're getting it off of Barnes, it's just not really doing anything. And then you actually have to put this in your deck. I'm just not interested in doing that. Um, next up we have Whirlwind Tempest. 8 mana 6 6 your minions with Wind Fury and Mega Wind Fury. Uh, card is terrible. Never want to put that in your deck ever. Um, just way too win more, and it's an 8 mana 6 6. 
Um, next we have Batterhead, 8 mana, 312 rush. After this attacks and kills a minion, it may attack again. Um, this is a pretty strong effect. Um, my only problem with it is it only has three attacks, so it's not going to be able to kill a lot of things. Um, it's an okay card for dealing with like a bunch of small minions, but at the same time, you don't want to play a answer to the to a bunch of small minions on turn eight. And I just don't think this ever really is good enough. Um, Portal Over Fiend, six mana, five six shovel three portaled into your deck. When drawn, summon a 2-2 demon with Rush. Um, the card seems potentially powerful with Plot Twist. Um, other than that, I don't think it's super good. It's, it's a pretty powerful card um, that you get to get a bunch of 2-2 demons with Rush. And it's better in this class. Well, it's better in... I guess it's neutral. But it could be useful in Warlock because you get to tap... Um, anything that draws a lot of cards, you could potentially make an argument for this. Um, but I think it's most likely just going to be good with Plot Twist, if anything. I'll give it a 2.5. Um, Unseen Saboteur, 6 mana, 5, 6. Battle card, your opponent cast a random spell from their hand, target children randomly. Um, this card is interesting, it has some applications. Um... It's definitely uh, an interesting card. It can mess with Mechatsune Warlock at times. You can like um, make them cast their Cataclysm before they want to, but I think this is just a little bit too corner case for it to be good enough. Um, next up we have Azerite Elemental. 5 mana, 2, 7 at the start of your turn. Uh, gain spell damage plus 2. So, my assumption is the spell damage to stacks. If you keep untapping, if you keep uh, going into your turn with this, I assume it, it stacks, which is pretty powerful. Um, it has uh, some potential, but it is just a 5 mana 2 7, which is pretty slow in a format as fast as wild. So, I don't expect it to be wicked. Um, Hench Clan Hag. 4 mana, 3-3, three, three, summon 2 amalgams with all minion types. Um, I don't think there's enough tribal synergies for this to be powerful enough. You can maybe make the argument for it in a demon zoo deck with some pirate synergies with Captain. Um, outside of that, I don't really think this is going to be good enough. So, I'm just going to give it a 2. Alright, next we have Magic Carpet, 3 mana, 1, 6, after you play a 1 cost minion, give it plus 1 attack and rush. So it's similar to Hobgoblin, um, I think this card is okay, it's being a uh, 3 mana, 1, 6 is pretty hard to kill, um, and the effect is fairly powerful, so I'm going to give it a 3. Exotic Mount Seller, 7 mana, 5, 8, at whenever you cast a spell, summon a random 3 cost beast. Um, 3 cost beasts are pretty reasonably statted um, for the most part, but um, this just seems like a bad um, Gadgetan Auctioneer or Violet uh, Apprentice. Uh, it just seems like a way worse version of those cards, so I'm just going to give it a 2. Um, Underbelly Ooze, 7 mana, 3, 5, after the minions provide damage, I'm a copy of it. Um, so it's pretty much just a 7 mana patron, it's quite worse, it's quite a bit worse than a patron, so not really much to say there. Yo, what's up Trips? How are you today? Uh, Tunnel Blaster, 7 mana, 3, 7 Taunt, which Death Rattle deals 3 damage to all minions. Um, I think 
this card is just too weak. If it was a battle cry, it'd be very good, obviously. But as a death rattle, it's just not effective enough. Next we have Mad Summoner. Six mana, four, four, fill each player's board with one, one imps. Um, the biggest uh, thing that you can do with this, I think, is just combine it with Treachery and the three mana, five, five Warlock Demon that, like, makes them take five damage when they summon minions. Can do a Treachery combo with that, and that's not too bad. Um, I do expect it to see a little bit of play in that kind of deck. Outside of that, I don't really see it making much of a splash. Recurring Villain, 5 mana, 3-6, Death Rattle. It says Minion has 4 more attack, resummon it. Um, I think this card would be pretty powerful if it was easy to make the attack 4 and keep recurring at 4 attack, but as it stands, it's not really um, able to do that, so not really worth playing your your deck. Uh, Sun Reaver War Mage, 5 mana 4-4 four, four. if you're holding a spell that costs 5 more, deal 4 damage. So similar to Blackwing Corruptor, um, it deals 4 damage instead of 3, which is pretty strong. It also doesn't, it also means, also uh, you need to have a spell that costs 5 or more instead of a dragon, which is a lot easier than having a dragon in your hand, I think. Um, card is pretty powerful and has a lot of potential. Portal Keeper, 4 mana, 5, 2, shuffle 3 portals into your deck. When drawn, summon a 2, 2 demon with rush. Um, unlike the 6 mana version of this, the stats on this are quite, quite bad. And I don't really think it's even worth playing in a plot twist type of deck with it. Um, next we have Hecklebot. Uh, I think this card has potential in a Taunt Druid type deck. 4 mana, 3, 8, Taunt, Battlecry, your opponent summons a minion from their deck. So I think this card is not going to see a ton of play in Wild because we have the disruptive elements in Dirty Rat, Death Ward, and Demonic Project. Um, but I do think it has a home in Taunt Druid because Taunt Druid is playing for a fatigue game plan with Death Ward, and now you have another Death Ward effect. And it's also quite a good minion to summon off of Oaken Summon. And it's something that is very nice to resurrect off Hadronox. So I think this card has a lot of potential in Taunt Druid and probably won't see much play elsewhere. Arcane Watcher, 3 mana, 5, 6, can't attack him on the spell damage. Um, I think this card is quite powerful in the right deck. Um, I think it only has applications in things like Silent Priest and Odd Shaman if that is viable enough. Um, it is a very powerful card though, so I will give it a 3. Um, in Silent Priest you already have Humongous Razor Leaf, but you wouldn't mind another 3 drop that's also very powerful. I think uh, it does make the cut there. Um, next up we have Spell Word Ju Jeweler. Uh, 3 mana, 3, 4, Battle Cry, your hero can't be target of, targeted by spells or hero powers until your next turn. Um, this card is interesting, might be a reasonable defensive option for Reno decks, and possibly good enough in some Chutterwalk decks. Um, so I think this card is reasonable, um, something I do expect to see some play in Reno decks and maybe Chutterwalk. Uh, Burly Shovelfist, 9-9, Rush for 9. Not really something you'll that we'll see play. It is a nice buff to nine drops off of Spiteful Summoner and things like that. But outside of that, it doesn't do anything for the format. Uh, Heroic Innkeeper for eight mana four four taunt battle cry gain plus two plus two for each other friendly minion. This card seems quite weak to me. 
Uh, you have to have so many menus on board for it to be good enough. And it's super swell. Um, Violet Warden. Six mana, four, seven taunt. Spell damage, plus one. Card isn't terrible. Um, the stats are not the best. But spell damage is a powerful effect. I don't really think it'll see play in wild, though. I'll give it a 1.5. It's not horrible, I think. It just needs a little bit more stats. Um, eccentric Scribe, 6 mana, 6 for Death Rattle, Summon for 1-1 one, one Vengeful Scrolls. Uh, this card is just not good enough. Never want to play this in your wild deck. Um, Safeguard is interesting. 6 mana, Taunt, Death Rattle, Summon a zero zero or zero five Vault Safe with Taunt, 4-5 Mech. Um, this card would have been very, very good at 5 mana. Um, I think at 6 mana, it's okay. Uh, I don't really expect it to see much play. Um, it's powerful effect. It's uh, kind of like a Sludge Belcher, and it does have some synergy with Zoliax, but I don't really expect it to see a ton of play. I'm going to give it a 2. Dolaren Crusader, 5 mana, 5 for D Divine Shield. Solid card. Um, not really something you would see in Wild, though. Um, Soldier of Fortune, 4 mana, 5, 6. When this minion attacks, give your opponent a coin. Uh, this is like a Silence Priest card, but it's so much worse than all the other options for Silence Priest. So this card is just a 1. Violet Spell Sword, 4 mana, 1, 6. Battle Cry gain plus 1 attack for each spell in your hand. Uh, for this to be good, you need like 4 or 5 spells for this to ever be um, good enough to play. And that's just a lot to ask. Um, so that's just going to be a 1 for me. Next up we have Traveling Healer. 4 mana, 3, 2, Divine Shield, Battle Cry, Restore 3 Health. Um, this card's interesting. It reminds me of Earthen, Far Earthen Rain Farseer, which is just too weak for a while, pretty much. Um, one mana and gaining Divine Shield and losing a health is okay. I don't really think this is quite good enough. Uh, next up we have Proud Defender. Four mana, two six taunt, has plus two attack while you have no other minions. Um, this is an okay card to get off, like, Oaken Summons. Um, not really something I would want to play in Taunt Druid, because it's pretty bad when you resurrect it with Hadronox. Um, it's an okay card. Might have some potential in some decks. 4 mana, 4, 6 Taunt is pretty powerful. I'm gonna give it a 2.5. Um... I could see this scene play potentially. 3 mana, 5 1, Faithless Rager, Battle Cry copy of Friendly Minions Health. Um, Rip Magma Rager, may he rest in peace. Um, but this card has potential. Copy of Friendly Minions Health is pretty powerful. You can um, maybe curve Vulgar Homunculus into this. Not too bad. Or something like an upgradable frame bot. Um, this card has potential. I'm not sure if it will find a home now. Could also just play it in uh, Silent Priest as a copy a Humongous Razor Leaf, which is also pretty strong. Um, next up we have Hench Clan Sneak, 3 mana, 3 3 stealth. It's like a fine card. Um, the biggest implication for this card, I think, is with uh, the four mana rogue card that gives a stealth creature plus two plus two, but I don't think it's quite good enough. Uh, next up, we have Flight Master, three mana, three four. Battle Cry summon a two two Griffin for each player. Um, this card seems okay. 
Um, maybe good enough in Odd Rogue. I highly doubt it. But the only reason I mention it in Odd Rogue is because you get to dagger down the 2 2 they get right away. And you have uh, 5 6 worth of deaths. But uh, not really worth it, I don't think. Yeah, 3 out of 5 6 isn't bad. I'm not sure. I'm, it, it could be okay in Odd Rogue. It's possible. I'll give it a 2.5. I'm on the fence about it. Um, next up we have Hench Clan Hog Deed. 2 mana, 2 1 Rush, Death Rattle, Summon a 1 1 Murloc. Um, 2 mana, 2 1 Rush is solid. Um, and it has a little, little bit of an added effect. It's like, not too bad. Not something that I will play though. Um, Arcane Servant, River Crocolis as an elemental. Not much to say there. Um, Sun Rebirth by 2 mana, 2 3. Bow Cry if you control a secret, gain plus 1 plus 1. So this is another payoff for Secret Paladin. Um, I'm not sure if it'll see play elsewhere. It could see play in like Secret Mage with Cabal Wacky, but I don't think it's good enough there. Um, but yeah, very powerful Secret Paladin card. The Totem Golem, basically. Very strong. It is a little awkward with Call to Arms, worth noting. Um, Spellbook Binder, 2 mana, 3, 2. Battle Cry, if you have a spell damage, draw a card. Um, card's okay. Um, you have to have spell damage, which is somewhat hard to get. I can't really think of many decks that would have a consistent spell damage. So I'm just going to give it a 2. It's not a bad card, but it's not something I expect to see play at all. Uh, Delirian, a Librarian, Silence, Adjacent Minions, 2 mana, 2, 3. Um, this card is pretty strong in Silence Priest and basically nothing else. Uh, I think in Silent Priest it is a 4. It's something that really helps your game plan. But outside of that, it won't see any play, I don't think. Evil Cable Rat, 2 mana, 1, 1, add a wacky to your hand. Um, card's okay, not super exciting. 1.5. Uh, mana Reservoir, 2 mana, 0, 6, spell damage plus 1. Um, it's a very interesting card. Um, it's hard to kill. So, I think it might be worth doing a 2. Um, but I don't think it's going to be that good. Because I think most of the decks I would want this effect are going to be aggressive, and you don't want a 0-6 in an aggressive deck. Um, next up we have Toxfin, 1 mana, 1, 2, Murloc, Battlecry, give a bet, friendly minion, po friendly Murloc, poisonous. I think this card is very, very powerful. And can just make, you can just trade a 1-1 one, one Murloc into a Obsidian statue or a Void Lord and get through it. Very powerful. Next we have Potion Vendor, 1 mana, 1-1, one, one, restore 2 health to all friendly characters. Um, the only reason, the, th the only way to see play, I think, is in a Combo Priest type deck to be used as like a pseudo Circle of Healing. But I don't think it'll see play there because Divine Him also has not seen play in that deck. But this is 1 mana, so maybe might make the cut there. Um, alright, so that's it. Let's see what I rated highest. So, did I rate anything at 5? I think I rated the Paladin the Secret of 5, and that was it. Alright, so wrapping up, we have Never Surrender at 5. I think that's going to be a very, very strong card in both Odd Paladin and Secret Paladin. Very, very strong payoff. Um, for a secret paladin, and it just really hurts the AOE um, against uh, with odd paladin. So, I think that card's going to be very, very strong.
and the rest, I, I think that was the only five I gave, the rest, so Toxin I gave a four, I think that card's going to be very powerful, just being able to trade up with a 1-1 one, one Murloc just seems very, very strong, um, Sun Reaver Spy, another super good Secret Paladin card, uh, Archmanger Vargas has a lot of potential, a lot of potential, um, applications, hard to say what it will see play with, but I think there's a lot of potential there. Geppetto Joy Buzz has a lot of potential broken synergies with Malagos and Aviana Coon, things like that. Um, and we have Underbelly Angler. I think this card is just very, very powerful in a Murloc Shaman. The, like I said before, I think uh, the two drop slot in Murloc Shaman was quite awkward out, outside of Rockpool Hunter, and now they have another great two drop. And then we have Muck Morphers, a potentially very, very strong card in a big Shaman archetype. And then we have Daring Escape, very powerful rogue card for Quest Rogue, especially. Might see play in something like Mill Rogue, and maybe Jade Rogue, things like that. Um, Underbelly Fence, uh, the Rush Totem Golem for Rogue, has a lot of power with um, Flash Burglar and the Wuzu Nation. Um, and then we have Vendetta, very, very powerful card in a Burgo Rogue and could be played in a Tempo Rogue as well. Zero mana, deal four damage, very, very powerful. And then we have Katrina Muerte, uh, very powerful card for Big Priest. Could see play over Rag. I think it is a little bit better against Aggro than Rag. Um, then we have Mysterious Blade, Fiery War Axe for Secret Paladin. Very, very powerful card. Uh, Commander Risa, another powerful Secret Paladin card. Has strong synergies with the secrets. And that's basically the highlights. So, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, hope you enjoy, hope you enjoyed it. And I'll catch you guys next time.